having 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 looked at the uh, you know uh, planned part of maintenance system uh, and we said that possibly our structural system would not need any maintenance foundation frame etc would need any maintenance that's what we said but this is may not be true mm. almost for whether it's structural system or non structural system but since safety is involved you know as far as structural system is concerned non structural items functional uh, performance might be affected but safety may not be affected to a great extent but uh, structural system both safety and serviceability could be affected so we look into how do we handle the structural system because this is not uncommon today that uh, uh, most of the quite often the structural system shows some sort of deterioration because we have not been able to foresee the condition and the deterioration so quite often this condition assessment is done through non destructive testing i said visual observation is a must so when we talk of inspection visual observation is must but then instrumental observation also will be doing so let's see how we go about it so we do sometime non destructive testing right now this could be part of routine or you know routine inspection part of routine inspection and check now obviously you'll not do it every day or every year you'll do it sometimes so this should be part of the routine inspection and if there is a defect you have seen you have to always do it now so therefore the why we do we have to do it because it's part of routine sometime legal purpose also we we'll have to do it supposing i am giving the house for you know building for uh, lease or rent so depending upon the owner i mean the uh, the, the agency yeah tenant basically so you may have to now i'll give you an example so that's legal purpose i'll give you an example actually i'll give you an example for example a bank you know decides uh, to mm, hire your building or even purchase the building now it was not meant for bank functional changes occurring the safety security safety is fine but the security is most useful you know you, i mean is a major concern for them so in that case they would like to know what is the condition of the structure as a whole because the rest of the thing they can change there can be alterations of the space that can be done functional aspect they can change but structural system they will not be able to change so they would like to know what is what is condition besides that even the loading condition because if the function changes loading condition might change for example you convert a particular office building to a bank building bank might require vaults whose concentrated load is higher now example is of course that bank bank building is no longer there mm, if you see in delhi mathura road uh, you know within delhi before faridabad you enter those areas were industrial areas earlier now many of them have become of office office many of them have become office spaces office office premises or malls or things like that now one of the you know one of the building which was partially constructed and actually was meant for an industrial building by some individual or some group then a bank decided to purchase that building now bank's requirement was that okay in this area certain areas we'll keep our vaults fireproof so it's made of heavy metal heavy steel and its weight was concentrated 1 ton per meter square over 1 meter square area 1 ton per meter square normally in the, even industrial floorings are not designed for that so they would like to know whether this is fine or in general aspect the overall condition of the structure so this is a legal purpose this is legal purpose there could be more legal purpose of the similar kind so sometime we do this investigation in order for legal purpose or if there's a damage to the structure either because of a slow deterioration process or accidental damages because of fire 
or earthquake or similar sort of thing, you know. So these are the purpose why this. Now, you see, as I said that we possibly thought that there is no need for doing, uh, uh, looking at the structures. Well, inspection still would be a need, I would say. That you may not, you, when you develop your maintenance profile, you may not keep the replacement cycle within 60 years, but inspection still may be necessary. You might still do a condition assessment once in 5, 10, 20 years, whatever it is, depending upon your type of building, we will see that. Importance of the building and ex exposure condition. Because materials, you know, this I have said that, yeah, because, okay, uh, because, because, because most of these systems or materials are man-made. You know, we'll, uh, just let me, let me just come back, I'll come back to this slide, but I am talking of, I'm talking of this actually scenario, uh, not, not here, because these are all man-made. Since these are man-made, the large chance of, chance of many of them actually, uh, this diagram is not here, but anyway, I'll draw it myself and then talk about it. Sometime later on, this diagram will come, the one I'm going to show you now, is something like this. Man-made system, they are produced with the expense of energy. So, you know, any man-made system, whether it is part of building, structure, or bridge, or whatever it is. So, actually what you have done, you have given some potential energy to it. You have raised it, you know, they are made, it, made of energy. So, they would like to dissipate this energy. So, this is the potential level energy and it would like to dissipate them. Now question is, so therefore there's, you know, this is always with time, they would like to, there will be a tendency to come back to its stable state. This is the stable state, stable natural state, stable natural. So for example, if you made steel, it was iron ore, which is a stable state. You have given energy to extract the iron out of it and alloy it with carbon etc, etc, to make it steel. So therefore, you have given some energy, potential energy, to, you know, it is potentially you have raised. Same is the case with cement. It was limestone and silica. Now you have made it cement out of this, by giving some energy, by heating, etc, etc, calcining, or whatever you call it. So most of the man-made systems are at higher potential or higher chemical potential level energy potential level, which you would like to, dis, to you know, dissipate. So therefore, they would like to come back to this natural state. Now, how do they come back? At what rate do they come back? That would depend, you know, at what kind of rate it is coming back. That would depend upon what is called kinetics. Rate will depend upon, that rate can be controlled. You might, you might see that it, it might, you might slow down the rate. For example, a steel rod kept outside will start rusting. But if I paint it black with epoxy painting, it will rust at a much slower rate. Right? Much slower. So this rate can be controlled. I mean, if I keep can keep the rate so slow that it almost remains in the same condition for next 60 years, then I have served my purpose. You know, so my life of this one is 60 years. If I Keep it, I mean, it would also depend upon this protection would need cost. Cost. So I might decide that I'll do it in this manner or may not do it. For example, if I make stainless steel, the material itself, so I have actually alloyed chromium, nickel, etc., etc. Now chromium forms a what is called a passive layer of oxides, which is colorless. So its color doesn't change. You don't see the oxide formation, but that oxide layer protects. So similar sort of kinetics can be controlled, but potential would always there will be a tendency to you know deteriorate so structural systems are not free from deterioration or kind of a material degradation it is not free so it it will require at least inspection if not repair and replacement in very important building and that's why we are discussing that's why we are discussing you know the condition 
subway it is required so as i said it's a part of maybe part of routine if it is distressed there can be distress of different kind particularly concrete system we are looking at so there can be some kind of what is called intrinsic cracks early distress due to intrinsic cracks uh, or maybe because of poor construction right so some sort of overloading or long term deterioration what we call durability problem so there can be situations particularly with concrete which can show early cracks what we call intrinsic cracks coming because of thermal you know thermal reasons that is heat of hydration and similar sort of thing and other one is shrinkage there are various kind of shrinkage in i mean drying shrinkage is of course the major one we we'll look into so this is one maybe there are some problem with the construction itself now uh, obviously in case of steel this doesn't come in that manner there's normally in steel structural steel obviously you will do protection all the time you know painting would be done and repainting repainting you will be doing but over a long period of time if it is a very long period run and they have a uh, reversal of stresses or repetitive loading the fatigue cracks might come so steel is therefore is you know it's generally is well behaved uh, relatively more predictable but in later stages of long term if it is 100 years old uh, the bridges and all that the inspection might be required so therefore the condition survey is important right legal purpose i have already told you so objective generally is first in case of concrete of course the objective would be to if it is either for legal purpose or because there is some deterioration i might sometime i might find like to find out what is the in situ characteristic strength of concrete in situ strength of the concrete you see in situ strength would be different than what has been actually done in the laboratory cube strength which you have done for quality control purpose but actual structure in situ strength might be quite different so sometime i'd like to know what is the grade of concrete in structure if it has actually shown some signs of problem if it doesn't show a sign of problem there's no cracking nothing then i may not do it actually uh, if i suspect all the places i may not do non destructive testing to identify its condition but some cases i might do so uh, grade of concrete i might like to do where a structural stability is in question for example i was giving legal purpose of the bank building in that case the load would be now changed therefore i'd like to find out what is the grade of the concrete right otherwise just for you know adequacy of strength for repair also sometime for repair purpose i want to do repair i'd like to know also what is the strength some retrofit corresponding to current earthquake code i might like to find out the strength so grade of concrete i might find it so therefore i define objective if the objective is to find out the characteristic strength i can state this objective as finding the estimating the characteristic strength of concrete estimating the characteristic strength of concrete so that's my objective clearly i have to state i might say that as you know assessing the quality of concrete that's different that objective is different qualitative or quantitative that i have to specify so very clearly one has to state simply large you know this is simply judge the quality of concrete this might be a scenario in case of dispute and if the quality is bad then you might find the grade of then you might get interested in the grade of concrete all right so steps involved in such ones are when i am doing through ndt or otherwise first step would be of course define the objective it could be when diagnosis for example there is a crack what is the reason for this crack <coughs> what is the reason for this crack so that's diagnosis and uh, this way i must clearly specify my objective so objective number 1 could be diagnosis of the distress the diagnosis for the you know diagnosis for the reasons of the cracks estimate number 2 objective could be estimating the characteristic strength of in situ concrete in situ characteristic strength so this is how i should clearly do it then obviously all the time it follows with a visual inspection and document survey visual inspection is must i may not do an instrumental work inspection but visual survey is always a must 
and visual survey means visual inspection means as first first find out what is the nature of the crack today you can even you know you can photograph them you can even uh, record them mm -hmm. and the systematic way you can actually uh, keep track you know keep keep them in your records then document survey means check the drawings because if you have as built drawing available as built drawing which should be available after the construction is over i re look at the drawing and prepare as built drawing that's very important one drawing fit for construction you know first is the drawing then there's one certified fit for construction design office gives you then the construction actually occurs when there's a construction there may be some deviations so after that as built drawing that should be or as existing drawing that should be available to me now this i might survey document survey document survey also might require for example some problems might occur during the construction phase say uh, something like some sort of uh, you know some something like let's say i give in building we are talking of building in buildings it might suddenly there must have been during construction phase there must have been a fire for example the hotel building there's a hotel building uh, uh, earlier it was lodi hotel changed to some multinational hotel i forgot on the name during they were you know newly constructing the hotel uh, demolishing the lodi hotel original there was a fire during construction phase so this records of this one document survey should be available to me when i am looking at it later on that there was a fire some rectification was done etc etc so document survey means seeing the drawings seeing any record that is available in bridges this happens quite often maybe the welt got tilted so much or maybe there was a flood during halfway through the construction the welt well well, well actually got washed away so you have to read do the wall or maybe shift the location new well must have come in something something of that kind so or or because the river changed its course which happens in big rivers like brahmaputra or gange particularly brahmaputra you know it changes its uh, meandering of the river so bridges this happens quite often so this records what has happened this should be part document survey then i know what is happening actually so visual inspection then document survey then followed by that analysis and interpretation of the result right and drawing the conclusion then after that i'll be doing some test and investigation and then analysis of the result so first is visual observation document survey then analysis a set of test i decide i decide the set of test and also the number of test is important because if i if i just decide any test and every test is not worthwhile i i know there are plenty of examples consultant if they understand the system properly if they understand the deterioration and everything properly they wouldn't give wrong advice of wrong test for example if a building is 6 months old or under construction building and you have seen some problem honeycomb or something you don't say that you do a test for what is called carbonation in concrete rcc building i'm talking of carbonation is carbon dioxide reacting of the atmosphere reacting with the calcium hydroxide produced from cement hydration and then reducing down the alkalinity of concrete this has got its implication on corrosion we may not go into details but sometime we will be, be talking about that a little bit more now 6 months old building you don't expect carbonation or during the construction you don't expect carbonation but some somebody might suggest do the carbonation test as well that is not right so what all that i am trying to say is objective and correspondingly i must have test and more the number of test i increase my accuracy but i increase my cost also so it has to be optimal balance we'll see that how we do it so set of test the selection and then followed up the investigation once the results are available analysis interpretation of results and then i come to the conclusion that this is the cause or this is the state of affairs degree of damage or this is the repair scheme i need so that's what it is right so then this recommendation involves you know repair scheme what i need so that's what it is all right so this is schematically shown here in this diagram condition survey and ndt for example establishment of aims and you know first one is aims and in information required here first is aims 
information required is document you know survey then obviously then you do is condition you know the ex, ex, you do a survey you do a document survey then uh, what is yeah aims and what is required for example diagnosis of distress and things like that then obviously preliminary site visits sometime after site visit you say that i have to go up you know my the people inspector will have to go up so therefore all logistics etc etc then basically uh, sometime the owner all agencies involved must agree come to an agreement that this will be my methodology this is what we will do it etc so that's that's you know and that's criteria also you decide then systematic visual inspection this is must systematic visual inspection and then some survey some calibrated assessment because i might like to get the strength we'll see that sometime later on then localized investigation something like core pull out test etc and if you are also uh, doubt the integrity of the structure as a whole you might do even a load testing one is testing the material finding out their properties and then recheck into the design put it into the design other one is doing localized load testing we'll come to that all of them one by one now all this information finally will go you know to analysis interpretation and final basically uh, reporting that we'd be doing so all this information will go and once this comes i come to a conclusion then the action so then basically documentation of the results and what what are what i'm supposed to do that will come so you can see first stage is this stage 2 is this some non destructive testing stage 3 may be further testing not always i do something might i do partially and then i decide okay if the result is like this i'll do more testing if the result is not like this i'll not do the testing you know so that decision now this is true for bridges also or anything of that kind you know although bridge maintenance system is much more you know um, pretty systematic they have all the maintenance systems available building is a problem because too many too many items too many trades and uh, uh, what i call you know the importance of the structure is not as much as the bridge as we shall see somewhat later on so visual survey and preliminary observation very important ones some of this some of these things might get repeated uh, with more emphasis later on because i might talk about visual survey some more uh, so this we generally carried out to have general idea about the structure nature of distress if there is any then document and collect, collection of in, information from user this is very important collection of information from user i mean this user might be simply the security person who has been there for last 20 or 15 years so sometime something may not be somebody might have missed recording or even because of apprehension must be reported for example there is an supposing there is a light tremor earthquake a lot of people say oh this cracks have come after the earthquake when you go and talk to the uh, persons who have been there let's say security personnel or similar personnel yes, no no this is there for last 15 years this kind of thing happens so basically users means everybody as much as information you can collect some of those things first wet when the first first time when the distress was observed recording might have taken place later but somebody who is a non technical person or a user might have actually seen it earlier so such informations are important ones you can do also diagnosis during visual survey if you know crack patterns you can identify the nature of the cracks for example looking at the nature of the crack 90% of the time in concrete structures you will be able to identify why it has occurred because every cause manifests itself in a given form of visual distress 
right? Supposing I have moisture marks, then I know that the moisture leakages has been occurring. And if you see rust staining, that means even if you don't see the steel, rusted steel at the moment, reinforcement inside, but you have seen the brownish color of the stains, which means that basically rusting might be occurring inside. So visual observation, this kind of thing happens. And if this crack, then pretty easy to actually identify. For example, the varieties of cracks are recorded by people and this sort of diagrams are available in many literatures, right? So there are classified as A, B, C, D, etc., etc. as you can see. For example, A you can see here, B you can see there, C you can see there, I'll define what they are, right? So then uh, you have got D, I, G, H, M, E, F should be there somewhere, F, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and there should be L, there should be J somewhere, uh, somewhere there should be L I can see, so I is there, anyway it doesn't matter, we will we'll see each of them. So I, this is for concrete system, this is for concrete system, right? Uh, but this is, this is not, uh, you know, this, uh, this, still there are lots of other cracks which are omitted out. These are last, largely the, some of the int intrinsic cracks and some intrinsic cracks is means not because of the load, uh, uh, some of the cracks which might have come because of deterioration, right? Typical cracks that you see, uh, uh, mm, not exhaustive actually, there are more, right? So structural cracks are not covered in this, but other cracks are covered. So for example, ABC, you see, uh, is what is called plastic settlement or plastic shrinkage cracks. Now, if you look at concrete, let's say this is a cylindrical, I mean, it's just a, yeah, concrete, uh, this is a uh, concrete, let us say, concrete uh, element, vertical element. Now, I fill it in, I fill it in with, you know, I have just have concrete there, right? I have made concrete out, concrete inside this and uh, what is the color I want to use, let us say this. So inside there is a mortar, mortar is there and these are aggregates. Now you know concrete system is, concrete system in this plastic state is made of material of different specific gravities, commonly used cement is ordinary Portland cement whose specific gravity is 3.15 and specific gravity of water is 1, specific gravity of water is, specific gravity of water is 1, so W is 1, C is 3.15. So what will be the tendency? Water will have a tendency to come up. So water comes up, water has a tendency to come up, cement has a tendency to go down. So you do not see uniform density of the material there and this results in what is known as bleeding. Now when such bleeding occurs, actually there is plastic settlement. So whole of the solid material subside, I mean you can even visualize it as Stokes law. Larger particles, also particles are there, larger particles and higher specific gravity, they have a tendency to go down. Water has a tendency to come up. So there is a subsidence of the whole thing. There is a subsidence. You know, one of the ways you measure the bleeding is subsidence, but generally there will be subsidence. Now, supposing I have a reinforcement here, supposing I have a reinforcement here, you know, I have a reinforcement here, somewhere there is a reinforcement. What will happen? Concrete in the, from the top will like to subside, but it will get stuck here. Concrete from the side will subside, right? And this results in a crack, just forming a kind of a crack on top of the reinforcement. If this settlement is high, not, it will not, you will not see always, but if you see it, it might have occurred because of this. So plastic settlement crack occurs, you know, you see them within first 48 hours itself, especially this is associated with high bleeding. So typically A, for example, A is an aggregate, even some large aggregate might show or reinforcement, you might see cracks around the aggregate or the reinforcement. And here, for example, A is all reinforcement. So it's a Pattern, you can see the pattern is almost like stirrups, you can see longitudinal reinforcement, there are cracks right on top of it. So these are plastic settlement cracks, uh, can happen when you have 
overdosing of the admixtures made it too flowy. The water has a tendency to segregate and come out and bleeding is occurring. So, you might see ABC are actually plastic settlement cracks. Why, why see? There is a haunch. There is a haunch like this, right? There is a haunch, haunch like this. So, the concrete here has settled more. Concrete here is actually restricted. So, therefore, you might see a crack and this one. So, this C cracks are near the haunch. So, these are plastic settlement cracks, right? Okay. And then uh, D, F is early shrinkage cracks, E, D, F. These are drying. Plastic state is 48 hours. Then shrinkage cracks you might find because what will happen is as the concrete dries off, moisture is removed out of the concrete surface. You know, the, structure, the microstructure of the concrete has a tendency to shrink. Okay, I can go into the theory of shrinkage, but I don't want to do that at this moment. But analogy I can give clay, clay. If you dry it off, it shrinks. If you add water, it swells. Now, cement hydrates, something similar happens, not exactly the clay is, you know, uh, I'll say it's larger sort of particles. Cement, cement hydrate gels are still finer level. So, when water goes out of the gel pores, there can be shrinkages, there will be collapse of the gel, you know, interlayer, uh, the collapse of the interlayer between the gel sheets and things like that, CHS sheets and all. I do not think I will go into that case, concrete science part of it, but shrinkages do occur in cement paste as they dry off. So, this kind of if it is drying off from the surface, surfaces will like to shrink and inside may not allow it to shrink because inside did not shrink, it is still containing moisture. So, if something is trying to shrink and somebody is restricting it, what will happen? The one it will be restrained shrinkage induced tensile stresses. So, you might see cracks. Normally, you see it in thin structures because surface area is large, lot of drying is occurring compared to volume. So, we are of large surface area compared to volume, shrinkages could be an issue. So, D, E, F are the shrinkage type of cracks. Some of them are crazing. For example, K is what is called crazing also because of such kind of shrinkage, but fine cracks clustered around like as if you have put a mesh or something of that kind. Usually, they are not deep. But shrinkage cracks sometimes can be deep also. The DEF type of cracks can be sometimes, uh, you know, uh, uh, they, they can be, they might go even deeper. Sometimes even can be through and through in case of very thin wall without, uh, it's drying shrinkage, not properly cured. A lot of drying has occurred in summer months of northern India, composite monsoon climate or desert climate, this can occur, right. So, DEF are of those kind, early shrinkage. Thermal cracks occurs in massive structures, you know, where retaining wall, for example, a large structure. Now, there the issue is something different. Surfaces become cold. It has dissipated its heat. While the heat of hydration that is produced is inside is still warm. Again, the same situation, the surface wants to shrink because temperature has come down. Inside is still warm, does not, you know, it is providing a restraint to the surface. So, you might get cracks in massive structure, mass concrete sort of thing, where the volume to surface area ratio is large, where volume is less, surface area is large, shrinkage, where volume is more, surface area is, you know, less in that case, larger volume, you might get thermal cracks. So, these are, you know, examples of like GHR thermal cracks, some cases you might see thermal cracks, some cases you might see thermal cracks, G and H. H then J, K are crazing, as I said, fine cracks coming out of shrinkage. Aesthetically, they are bad, otherwise, they are not very dangerous. Reinforcement corrosion cracks, you will always see parallel to the reinforcement bar, right? Because the rusting would have caused expansion of the metal product. Product of rusting is more, ex it occupies more volume than the metal itself. In case of steel, 7.85 is our density. Rust will have one second, you know, can be one fourth one third of that density could be much, much less, rust product. So, they tend to expand and cause cracking of the cover concrete. And you find the crack along the parallel to the reinforcement bar itself like it is shown here. So, then the other kind of cracks which you might see is called alkali aggregate reaction. They give rise to what is known as map cracking. 
So map cracking, you will find cracks all around the aggregate. And if you actually take out those aggregates, you will find the white growth of silica gel, alkali silica reaction product, white colored alkali silica gel you might see because some of those alkalis in the cement react with some of those reactive silica from the aggregates, minerals, certain minerals for example, opal quartz, chalcedony, they are the one kind of there are certain types of uh, 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 silica, silicates can actually form a kind of a gelatinous structure which absorbs water and then cause expansion. And you see what is map cracking, usually the aggregate you can take out. If it is sulphate attack, again you can take out and find, you know, various attacks also you can actually do further analysis on the way. So, some of the crack patterns are here. 